Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We honor God in the name of Jesus Christ. And certainly we pray that you can hear us all right uh, on tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. We certainly uh, want to let Bishop Arnold G. Ford know Praise the Lord. The check is in the mail. Praise the Lord for that wonderful introduction. We appreciate you and we thank God for you. I want to say to Bishop Arnold G. Ford uh, tonight and to the great men of God that are his armor bearers holding up his wonderful arms. Just want to say thank you uh, for your tenacity. Thank you for your boldness, your courage. Certainly thank you for being a trailblazer, doing something brand new, something different, uh, something that uh, most of us wouldn't have even been comfortable uh, even striving to do. And we honor you tonight and we thank God for you and for your lovely wife. Praise the Lord to uh, Elder Ford doing a wonderful job. We thank God for, amen, all of your talents, your gifts. Praise the Lord. We just thank God for you in general. To Elder Peterson, uh, we salute you in the name of the Lord. And to Elder Miller, we say God bless you. And to all of your lovely wives, in Jesus' name. We certainly want to honor our founding bishop, praise the Lord, our general overseer, Apostle James B. Thornton. Amen. We know that you are at home watching even now. Praise the Lord. We bow our heads to you and say God bless you. May the Lord ever keep you and strengthen you and bless you even at the age of 90, headed towards 91. We honor you in the name of the Lord. We are here at the church tonight. We've uh, been here. Amen. The praise and worship team has been here for hours. They are ready. Uh, praise the Lord. We thank God for everything that has taken place on tonight. We promise you not to be long uh, before you all, but we definitely appreciate this great opportunity, and we are honored, praise the Lord, to be able to worship with you. There are, there are several, there are several, praise the Lord, preachers, pastors, that Bishop Ford could have called upon uh, uh, that could have been the keynote speaker on tonight, but I am honored, praise the Lord, I am humbled uh, that he has selected me, praise the Lord. And however, I am the least of them all, but I am honored that he would even decide to choose me. And so we honor him and we honor God for what the Lord is doing in this very hour and in this even season, praise the Lord. And so we're going to come with a, a selection uh, in the name of Jesus Christ and then uh, we'll come back for just a few moments and just share a brief thought. Uh, we'll be very direct on tonight, uh, a brief thought that's something the Lord put in our hearts. Uh, to share with the precious people of the Lord. At this time, praise team. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Truly, we thank the Lord 
for this wonderful, beautiful uh, virtual conf um, conference that Philadelphia put forth. We thank God for seeing the beautiful people of God, just seeing your faces. We thank God for how he's been covering us in the blood. He's been a good God. He's been keeping us. And we just, we just grateful for how the Lord has been blessing the saints all over. And so we're just going to sing this one song. Every praise that we have is to our God. He's worthy of all the glory and all the honor. So just sing with us. Put your hands together with us while you're in your homes. Every praise is to our God.
wonderful May conference. We honor what the Lord has already done. Bless the name of Jesus. We honor him for what he is going to continue to do for us, his people. Uh, for some reason, I feel the Lord provoking me to 
uh, go to this passage of scripture. I believe it's in 2 Kings. Uh, by the grace of God, 2 Kings. Chapter number four, Second Kings, chapter four, right quickly, if you have your Bibles, your iPads, your cell phones, please uh, put your GPS in and meet me at Second Kings chapter four. Uh, something the Lord just pressed upon my heart in the midst of the song. Second Kings chapter 4. And in verse number 2. And Elisha said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me, what hast thou in the house? She said, thine handmaid hath not anything in the house save a pot of oil. Glory be to God. Then he said, go borrow the vessels abroad of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels. Borrow not a few. And when thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons. And thou shalt pour out into all these vessels. And thou shalt set aside that which is full. So she went from him, shut the door upon her and her sons, and brought the vessels unto her. She poured out, and she poured out. Came to pass when the vessels were full that she said unto her son, Bring me yet a vessel. He said unto her, There is not a vessel more, and the oil stayed and the oil stayed glory be to God uh, by the grace of God if we can for the next few minutes uh, we'll talk on the subject his grace in our pandemic his grace in our pandemic his grace in our pandemic. Father, we thank you even now and we celebrate you, we honor you. Certainly we acknowledge that there is none like you in all of this earth. Glory, dominion, and power belongs to you. And therefore, we lift up holy hands tonight without wrath and without doubting. We come boldly to the throne of grace because we know that we need you. We can't do this without you keep us and we shall be kept touch us even now and give us clarity of speech glory be to God help us O oh God that there will be a distinction and the words will go forth with clarity that your voice will be heard and your power will be felt in the name of Jesus Christ thank you tonight for every vessel every individual that has partook in this great conference Bless every pastor, every speaker, every elder, every lay member. In the name of Jesus, keep us as only you can, and we'll give you the glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. If you don't mind, real quick, every, Max, everybody, if you please put your hands together, and let's give Jesus. And Bishop Ford would say, now give him your best praise. 
We honor God. He is worthy to be praised. Grace in our pandemic. Bless the name of Jesus. We find here uh, right quickly that there was a widow woman. And in the confines of this city of where she was, praise the Lord, there was a routine historically known of whereby... Uh, that when the creditors were owed money, when they were in debt, bless the name of the Lord, and if you could not pay them, and if you had a man child, they would come and they would seek out to take your children so that they can become servants. She now has lost her husband. She has lost the ability to be able to have uh, provision and to have finances. Therefore, where there's no provision and there's no finances, it is, it is us to know that there is no bread, there's no peanut butter, there's no jelly on the table. Bless the name of Jesus. But it is here that this woman somehow, some way, bless the name of the Lord, God allows her to find favor. Somebody shout favor. Favor is what some people would say in the confines of the church, that favor is not always fair, but yet favor is of the Lord. Bless the name. Hallelujah. If God favors us, there is nothing that an enemy of foe, there is nothing that even a loved one has the ability to do. Bless Jesus. Favor is something that uh, it's like unmerited grace. It's like it's like something that you you can't earn it. You don't deserve it, but because God saw fit. God sees things, hallelujah, in all of us. He knows the beginning from the end because of his all-knowing, his omniscience, because he has the ability, because he's alpha and omega. He knows the ending from the beginning, and so therefore, he knows what you and I will do before we ever partake in a particular way. It is here that this precious woman, hallelujah, she comes across a man of God. And uh, hallelujah, the two bondsmen, the bondsman was coming to, hallelujah, disrupt her household and to eject her the two children, the two sons out of her household. The Bible says that Elisha said unto her, what shall I do for thee? I need you to tell me. I need you to talk to me. Hallelujah. Ah, he, he asks her this question, what shall I do for thee? Hallelujah. He then asks her, he says, tell me, what do you have in your house? She says, uh, I don't have anything. Bless the name of the Lord. Uh, hallelujah. Remember, there's no provision. There's no finances. Her 401k is shot. Bless the name of the Lord. She has spent every dime that she has had, but yet she has a little pot of oil left in the house. Hallelujah. Uh, he then says, I need you to go and borrow all of the vessels that you can. Hallelujah. Don't borrow a few, but I need you to go to everybody in your uh, neighborhood. I need you to go to everybody. Bless the name of Jesus in your zip code I need you to go and bombard and knock on doors hallelujah and I need you to borrow vessels and do not borrow just a few vessels notice this now she only had 
had a small pot of oil. Hallelujah. Mm, but how many know that when God, Jesus, attaches himself to something that may look minuscule, he has the ability to stretch it way out. Hallelujah. He has the ability to take a little bit of money and uh, he can make it look like uh, you're living hallelujah on an upper echelon group even though you're not uh, hallelujah you know that you've been shopping at payless and buying cheap shoes bless the name of Jesus but when somehow when you walk with favor it doesn't matter if you're walking in payless shoes or walking in JC penny shoes uh, when God's grace is upon your life uh, Hallelujah. You're going to shine any which way. It is here. Bless the name of Jesus. I only need a few more minutes. It is here that now, hallelujah, he told her to go into all of your zip code. And I need you to go get all the vessels that you can from all of your neighbors. And she comes back. Bless the name of the Lord. And she begins, hallelujah, to talk again to the man of God. He he says, now go and shut the door upon you and your sons. I, I want to pause here for just a few seconds because it is encumbered upon us that we begin to tie the collaboration of the verses together because it is here that he gives her a word to go and shut the door. Somebody repeat after me and say, shut the door. He tells her to go and shut the door upon you and your children. Hallelujah. There are some things that you just need to do with you. Hallelujah. And nobody else. Hallelujah. Ah, but then in Matthew around, uh, I believe, chapter 26 or so, Matthew declares that when you go, hallelujah, he's changed my text tonight. Uh, ah, and when you go and when you pray, hallelujah, he says, enter into your secret closet. Here we go. Now we're coming. He says, enter into your secret closet. He says, but when you go in, I want you to shut the door. Somebody repeat and say, shut the door. Hallelujah. I want you to shut the door. Notice what Jesus begins to say in Matthew now. Jesus begins to belch out a word in red and he says that what you do in secret, he says, what you do in private, I'm going to reward you openly. Hallelujah. I'm going to rewind back here now to 2 Kings Kings chapter 4. She goes into the secret closet. She shuts the door. Hallelujah. There's nobody there but her. Hallelujah. The children. Hallelujah. And God is there. Ah, but now because she's operating in a spirit of obedience. Obedience, hallelujah. Obedience will get you the victory. Obedience will get me the victory. Hallelujah. I know everybody is looking, hallelujah, to just sow a seed and think that the seed that you sown is going to bring you into a greater level, hallelujah, of spirituality. Well, let me tell you to really get there, we're going to have to obey God. He says, if you love me, he says, keep my commandments. I feel like talking here tonight. If you love me, Jesus said, he said, keep my commandments. In other words, keep my word. Hallelujah. She shut the door and all of a sudden because of her obedience unto the man of God, hallelujah, which came from a word that God gave him, now she's pouring. Hallelujah. Notice she only had a small pot of oil. Ah, oh, God, hallelujah. But all of a sudden, she takes the pot of oil and God begins to allow her to continue to pour into one pot, into two pots, into three pots, into four pots, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve pots. Hallelujah. God extended 
grace unto her. Why? Because she found favor through her obedience. Hallelujah. Somebody shout favor through obedience. Yes, because I've decided to, to do what God commanded me to do and doing God's bidding is not always easy. Hallelujah. But that's why we've got to learn. Hallelujah. To do what God has commanded us to do. She took all of the oil and the Bible said that when she asked one of her sons where is the rest of the pots uh, the vessels rather she he said unto her that we don't have any more but when she looked back at the oil the Bible said that the oil was gone the oil had stayed hallelujah as long as she kept on pouring hallelujah God kept on supplying uh, somebody missed what I just said as long as she kept on pouring God kept on supplying he will give hallelujah yes he will give money he'll, he'll give finances he'll give seed to the sower hallelujah it is important to know that in this pandemic while the Dow Jones is falling and while the government is going astray and while everybody is pulling out their hair and wondering what they're going to do about their next job I want to tell somebody tonight while I preach to myself that God is a deliverer and that as long as we keep on pouring God will keep on supplying as long as we obey what God told us to do I got to close here now hallelujah so we can all go home and get a little rest ah, but I want to tell the church tonight to do not waste this pandemic can I say it again hallelujah I got to go home now but I want to say it again I want somebody to type it in the chat room somebody on Facebook type it in don't waste this pandemic hallelujah the word waste means to fail or to neglect to use hallelujah the word waste means to employ uselessly or without adequate return and so in other words while you're home and the door is shut and while some of us are complaining and some of us are murmuring and some of us hallelujah don't know what to do hallelujah I want to tell hallelujah you to turn the switch on and start to give God the glory and start to give God the praise hallelujah to God this is the season for us to flourish the Bible said let the wheat and the tear grow together so in other words everybody should be growing but the, the tear hallelujah they will grow too but the growth that they have they will produce fruit but the fruit that they have it is not hallelujah it is not edible fruit y'all God I feel like preaching here now hallelujah the fruit that the tear bears hallelujah it is not the fruit hallelujah that is unto glory the fruit that they bear is damnable fruit but then the bible says let the wheat grow together and when we are the wheat hallelujah to God things begin to flourish in your life now is the time that while we are at home I remind you again don't waste this pandemic with debates and foolish talk hallelujah but go to fasting go to praying hallelujah we should be flourishing hallelujah when the church doors open we should not come back the same way we left I don't care if you left good if you left good you should come back great if you left bad 
good. You ought to come back good. There ought to be a shift in our spirit, man. Hallelujah. We ought to have the fruit of the spirit. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, meekness, goodness. Hallelujah. Faith, temperance. There is no law against such. But that's why we got to pray and call on the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. It was Mary and it was Martha. Excuse me, Bishop Ford. I feel pretty good now. It was Mary and Martha. And while they were there, they both were in the house. Could I say it like this? They both were in the church. But one of them chose the good part. But while Mary, hallelujah, had chose the good part, Martha got upset at Mary because Martha wanted Mary to join her. Well, I can't join you right now. God's calling me to sit down at his feet. Why did Mary sit down at the feet of Jesus? Because if you sit down at the feet of Jesus, there is nourishment. There's power. There's strength at the feet of Jesus. There's joy unspeakable at the feet of Jesus. That's where I want to be found. I want to be found at the feet of Jesus. I'm going to choose the greater part. Yes. Joshua chapter 124 on the way out he gives his farewell address but he told the children of Israel choose ye this day whom you're going to serve hallelujah I'm going to serve the Lord I dare somebody shout I'm going to serve the Lord come hell come high water I'm going I'm going to give him the glory I'm going to give him the praise because he's wild brought me out of the muck and mire brought me from a mighty long way who was there when he brought you over the water who was there when he pulled you out of the strip club who was there when mama died and you had nobody to cry to it was the Lord that brought you over don't you dare forget to bless him in the midst of the pandemic praise him in the midst of the storm give him all the glory give him all the praise cause he's wild to be praised when my mother and my father forsake me the Lord the Lord will take me up he'll make my feet like Hans feet and set me upon high places somebody clap their hands somebody give God glory somebody shout thank you We should be progressive. I'm closing. We should be progressive. But the progression I'm talking about in this season is not for programs, it's not for business, it's not for projects, it's not for ideas, but I'm talking about we should be lifting up our spiritual growth. We should be pushing for the kingdom of God. For God is nigh. I have a question, and I don't want to scare anybody tonight, but what if things don't go back to normal? Can you maintain spirituality? Does the building make you more spiritual? Ooh. Or do you have a life outside of it? 
I know we want to get back in worship. I do too. I want to see the precious people of the Lord. But if God don't ever allow us to assemble like we used to, let me tell you something. Your praise, like the songwriter said, ought to be for real. Your praise ought to be able Hallelujah. To still crescendo up into the heavens. God ought to still be able to hear you while you're in the shower giving him glory. God ought to be able to hear you in your basement giving him praise. If we can never get back together, just what if? Oftentimes we, we talk this piece and, and, and it may happen, but just what if it doesn't? What if it doesn't? What are we going to do we're going to remember that the name of the Lord eh, is a strong tower and the righteous run into it and guess what we are safe hallelujah I love you tonight God bless you Philly God bless you New York God bless you, South Carolina. God bless you, Bishop Jackson. God bless you, all of the great men of God that have spoken on tonight. God bless you, Bishop J.B. Thornton, to all the wonderful people of God. We love you. We thank God for you in Jesus' precious name. I just want to pray with you before we turn it back over in the name of the Lord. Father, we praise you and we celebrate you. We ask you, Lord God, that you would continue to bless us in the midst of everything. We know that we're living off of your economy. Oh, yes, we're living off of God's economy, and we praise you for it. Thank you because you pay great dividends. Thank you for allowing us to remain faithful in the midst of it all. Thank you. You did not allow us to backslide. But God, we want to hear the whole duty of man. That is to fear God and to keep your commandments. We honor you. We love you. I pray tonight that you will continue to bless my brothers and my sisters. Continue to bless every pastor in the name of Jesus. I pray, oh God, that you would give us all vision and outlook and hallelujah, insight on what to do. Bless us with people that will be able to be a spiritual influence in the right direction in the mighty name of Jesus we pray tonight for every armor bearer, every intercessor my God for every mother every aged man in the name of Jesus we pray for the young children hallelujah that they will be an army to rise up to continue to give you the praise to continue to give you the glory we pray for salvation in this hour we pray that God that you will pour out your spirit according to Joel in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, that sons and daughters would prophesy according to your word. Speak, Lord, for thy servants are listening. And we're willing, ready, and able to give you the glory. In this, we shall be found. In this, we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen back into your hands in Jesus name. God bless you.